I don't know how to describe it other than like like a demon type of sound. But it's silhouetted, hulking, every bit of five and a half feet wide, 13 to 14 foot tall, pitch black. The one thing that ran through my mind when I had this encounter was I don't have a big enough gun. Your host, two-time witness and field researcher for more than 40 years, William Jevnik. Welcome to Creek Devil. Welcome to the Q&A, everyone. Tom, what do we got today? All right. We have some really good questions. Uh, I'm going to start off with Danny from the Southern Sierra. He... Uh, he likes the show. He's, he likes the campfire concept. So, Danny, thank you very much. Um, he just has a suggestion, uh, bringing in a, a guest member, not to be featured. So uh, we would do the best we can, and uh, we'll blend it in with the uh, roasted marshmallows and the cool drinks. So uh, um, here's another question, though, we have from Kareem, uh, who writes in. And Kareem, thank you very much. We get excellent questions from you. Um, wanted to know if we'd seen the new footage of the Bartlett Bigfoot captured on video by the New Hampshire woman in YouTube. It looks interesting, but I don't know how genuine it is. Uh, but the unlocked knees movement was interesting. So I think I know this video and I would, my vote is a no, it's, it's not legit. Have any? But, have any have you either of you it? seen it? And any thoughts on? It? I haven't seen it. How about you, Forrest and Chuck? Have you guys seen it? What is it? Well, I, I, I didn't it. hear it. I, I, uh, what is it that we're supposed to have seen? Uh, I'm sorry. Um, what it is is there's a uh, there's a new footage of big Bartlett Bigfoot captured on video by a New Hampshire woman, and it looks interesting, but he doesn't know how genuine it is. Uh, or Kareem doesn't know how genuine it is, but the unlocked knees movement is interesting and it seems it's carrying something. So um, that's all we have. I think I've seen it and I, I just, I, it's hard to say, it really is. The problem with photographs and videos, the very best video out there is Patterson Gimlin. And that one gets criticized constantly but it, unfortunately it has a stack of supporting evidence that it's very legit it really is so you can have legitimate videos and unfortunately you're going to have a community that's going to knock it down so um well, that's all i can say okay i haven't seen it so maybe one of you guys that has could uh point me in that direction but uh you know, Bigfoot does have a unique way of walking. So, um, you know, the that's true. Means, so I'm going to have to uh, take gonna, back that no that I yeah. had and say, well, maybe. okay, I, I'm looking at it right now, and it's a long ways away, and it could be anything. Could be real. Could be somebody in a suit. Um, it's just really hard to tell. It looks like it's carrying something, right? Right now, there. Well. They enlarged it 200%. It's still quite a ways off. I can't tell if it's carrying something or not. Yeah. It says 200% at half speed. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I don't think it's carrying anything. Personally. I guess you'll have to send it to me, Will, because I don't know. Uh, I, I'm not familiar with it. but uh, Personally, I think uh, it's somebody you know. in a suit. <laughs> Yeah, I'll send it to you. First. There you go. See, now we're we're part of the critics out there, folks. Yeah. So just so you know, <laughs> we don't I pull mean, any punches. Yeah, it just doesn't look right to me. And I've seen the creatures myself. Yeah. You know, three different ones, and none of them look like that. My vote's a suit. All right. I could okay, be wrong. so I'm going to move on to the next. All right. And, and I just hold that out for for my uh, for my judgments as well. I'm 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 willing to be educated and willing to be wrong. So, okay. Now Kareem has uh, another question here. He says, and and I like this one because I'm in this camp. Okay, I'm more than sure in the beginning. Will and Tom 
were more leaning towards the hominid idea. And however, Forrest uh, seems to lean more to the ape theory. Am I right or wrong? If I'm right, then why? What are the new or what's the new or updated data uh, that would either, and I'm going to just add this, that would lean it either towards being a hominid or an ape? And will and for us, if you could explain the difference between a, an ape and a hominid. Well, well Forrest let's, will go into let's it. Let's actually start with that. Forrest then, will go into it in a moment, yeah. but all, all I can say is that the lines are blurred these days by scientists. Forrest? Really, between <laughs> an ape and a hominid? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, and people that I've worked with before, it's, you know, they're, they're sort of in that category. We'll leave that one alone. <laughs> okay, so Forrest, it's uh, you're on the hot seat. What's uh, well, I, besides I'm being happy, blurred? I'm happy, to, I'm happy to be on the hot seat. Hot, the term <laughs> hominid, hominid, <laughs> hominid comes from the, the term hominid day, and that actually includes all primates, great apes, primates, and and humans. That's a term that is inclusive of all the great apes and <clears throat> humans. So <laughs> they have, and, and Will was talking about that's where they blurred the edges because now they're wanting to use homonym versus hominid with, with a D, hominid with a D, and homonym with an N. And, you know, it just, I don't know why they can't just do something and stick with it rather than try to change it all the time. Yes, uh, we get into Bigfoot. I think Bigfoot is a great ape. I think it is. I have no proof that it is. I do not think that it is a archaic human. Now, I could be wrong. I have said this over and over and over. I could be wrong, and I would stand to be corrected if I am wrong. However... I have not seen anything that has proven to me otherwise that it's just a great ape. Now, you guys can take it from there. Well, I'm going to ask you, um, because I, I just don't know, but they seem like they're highly intelligent. Would you think that they are probably more intelligent than any of the great apes uh, you know, running around on the planet today? And then I'm going to ask another question, kind of related, hominid or hominid, could, was there like a proto-human that was sort of, might fit the description of Bigfoot, that would be considered a hominid or hominid? So two questions in there. Okay, you're asking me if I think that Bigfoot is more intelligent and a great ape, the great apes such as gorillas or chimpanzees yes. or even orangutans? Yes, <clears throat> yes. I think that would be questionable. I think that that would be something that would remain to be seen. Um, there are great apes out there, including gorillas and chimpanzees, that can operate computers. That's not to say that a Bigfoot couldn't operate a computer. Uh, they seem to be highly intelligent. But we don't know what their intelligence level is. There's no. So you're saying that some of the apes, gorillas, and chimps can operate because that would explain a lot of the phone calls I make to my bank and to other institutions <laughs> when somebody answered the phone. I dealt with some now of those I this week. All right, you got good one. You know, you know who's making them. <laughs> well, I'm well, not sure that they're going to be able went. to operate. <laughs> They're not going to be able to operate a computer on the level that maybe you or I would, but uh, they they can operate them in some of the very in very basic skills. I mean, you still have. Uh, I always go back to Coco the gorilla, and uh, she. There have been other gorillas too that have that since uh, Coco has passed on. Bless her heart. Um, she learned sign language. Uh, we do. We did realize that when she did that. You know, we always thought that primates, the such as uh, the great apes, could not um, it could not have abstract thoughts like we, we thought we were the only ones that could 
cognitively work in an abstract function. Well, we found out different. So I'm not going to say that Bigfoot can't do the same because they, I am sh- uh, sure that they probably can. I think but it was to what degree or too, what right? level, I have no idea. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. Yeah, with, with yeah, gorillas, it was awareness. self-awareness yeah. too, right? You've got, you got monkeys. Even even uh, the, the lesser monkeys have self-awareness, you know? So, uh, you know, you, you can't, I mean, you can make broad statements, but uh, and generalize about all primates, uh, but uh, to, for me to say that they're smarter than gorillas or you know chimpanzees or orangutans or gibbons, I, I have no idea. I could not. I could not do that. Now, what was the second question? I've already forgotten. Okay, so the second question is, I've forgotten it too, but I think the idea was um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> It has to do with hominids. We have to work on our cognitive skills. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, my, my, mine are questionable. But um, hominid and hominids, um, would there be a category in there? I believe this is the question. That would be a kind of like a proto-human. So something that's higher than an ape, but not as high as humans. That's something in okay, between. Well, this is a question for you and Will. I would think so. Well, when you, when you use the term hominid, that includes humans. That means present-day Homo sapiens sapiens and all the great apes and all fossil humans. So that's inclusive of all of that lineage there when you use okay. the hominid. They have just recently come up with, come up with hominid, and I... I don't. I very rarely use the term because you know what? I was never trained to use that term. I mean, it's just something I I, I watch lectures all the time, and I still see, you know, professors are out there and guys with PhDs that that are as old as myself, and they don't even use it. So uh, I mean, it's something that they've just recently decided that. Right. And for whatever reason, we'll, I don't know. We'll have but, to have, you know, they got to change stuff all the time. Yeah, we'll have to have John on. I think he's pretty conversant with that term. And I, I've Googled it, and I think I don't remember what the results were. All right. um, Let's go ahead and move on I, to the next I question. The real question. <laughs> and, and I, I just want to get a little more clarification. Okay. Yeah, okay, In, okay. You want you want the you want the Google? Tr- I just Googled it too. No, no, no. I don't okay. want the Google. I don't want the Google definition. All I want to know is, do you think <laughs> that there was a protohuman that was between, um, you know, whatever the fossilized apes were? And humans, that would be sort of in between. So it'd be smarter than the apes, but not as smart as a modern day Homo sapien. Well, yeah, there's always a possibility that uh, that that uh, that type of uh, individual exists. I mean, um, I think all your fossils, uh, if I'm hearing hearing this question correctly, all your uh, ancient archaic uh, forms of man that we trace our lineage through, such as Australopithecus, uh, all the way up to Homo sapien, uh, they're going to be considered, uh, you know, a, that combination of ape and man. I mean, that's what they are. Now, are you trying to say is there there's something between uh, that came before Neanderthal and those guys but that was more of an apish Human. I mean, all the the fossil records. I mean, you look at them, and they all look like a combination of ape and human. So uh, they all exhibit a combination of all those, uh, um, you know, okay. physiological could aspects. It, you know. Could a gigantic pithecus? Could could that be something like that? No, no, that's not a that a gigantic pithecus doesn't figure anywhere in the uh, uh, human evolution. I mean, now, gigantic, to say that Gigantopithecus, uh, I mean, I used to be on that, that uh, bandwagon thinking that uh, Bigfoot was probably a, uh, you know, evolved form of Gigantopithecus, and who's to say that it isn't? However, with some of the discoveries that they have made, they're now saying that Gigantopithecus is more orangutan-like and uh, its behavior and, uh, and not what we would see in the uh, present you know, Bigfoot. All right. 
Well, that's an excellent answer. That's kind of what I was looking for. This next question, and I apologize, I don't have the person's name who sent the question, but I got the question. It's excellent. If you recognize it, kudos. Um, and by the way, I'm going to interject real quick here. Folks, you are the ones who keep the topic alive and you ask these very interesting questions that other people have and they're questions that need to be addressed and brought up to uh, advance this topic. So that's a long-winded way of saying, please, please, please send us questions, any questions you have, to, pretty easy, questions at creekdevil.com. And we'll air them on the show and uh, let us know if you want us to uh, credit your name to it. Okay, so going on, this is definitely dovetails into a previous discussion we just had here. Okay, not sure if this has been touched on before, but could Bigfoot, from years of knowledge, know when deer, elk, cows, etc., will be having their young for an easy meal? And then there's the second part of this question, but I'm going to stick with that for now. Will, Forrest, what are your thoughts on this? Well, they're very observant, so I'm sure they, at least some of them, may be aware of that in their areas. What do you think, Forrest? No, I think I totally agree with you. I mean, it's just like any other predator. They know when the, the young are coming, and they're going to make... Uh, uh, they're going to use that opportunity to, you know, hunt and, and find an easy meal. How about well, you, Well, and dovetailing oh, into that, well, I was just going to say, I would add chickens to that, chicken coops, because I think we have plenty of uh, anecdotal as well as um, witness information, witness testimony. These things go for chickens a lot. Chickens are easy meals. And rabbits, right? Yeah, we've heard that in a number of accounts. Rabbits. Yeah, I think domesticated animals are uh, easy meals, but I think the creatures are smart enough to know they got to be cautious because it's very, you know, domesticated animals are close to humans. Oh, sure. What do you guys think? Chuck, Forrest? Oh, I agree. What, looking, looking for an easy meal? Sure. I mean, our our livestock, um, you know, let's face it, domesticated animals aren't usually as wily as, uh, you know, the native species. So they're going to be, they're going to be easier pickings for, you know, a predator and an intelligent predator. And let's, uh, we, and let's we, face it, they're, they're caged up in a lot of well, yes. I was going to say, we, when, just, when, we just provide an easy, uh, uh, you know, banquet for them sometimes. Yeah. Well, if they if they go into grease traps, digging food out of the grease traps behind the casino, uh, I mean, Chuck, I love looking that for story. Something, something, something easy, you know. We're looking for a surf and turf, buddy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, and uh, let's not let's not forget they don't limit themselves to domestic animals. Sometimes, for reasons known only to the creature, they want a can of pork and beans once in a while. Would that, <laughs> hey, would that would that be the surf and turf? Y'all will, will never let that die. <laughs> yes, yes. Tom, <laughs> would that be all a surf? That's what I'm messing up. Would that be surf and turf all a trash can? I think so. Yeah, <laughs> that that too. Absolutely. Um, okay, so we got question number two, and I, I want a, a kind of a, a good explanation. This is going to start off with Forrest because we talked about this with uh, I think Coco. Question number two: Do we have any more thoughts on trying sign language on Bigfoot? In other words, and I think a, an extension of this question is, would it be worthwhile? And do you think Bigfoot would uh, comprehend what you're trying to, uh, you know, any sort of sign language? 
Well, so I, it's a speculative well, question, but it's a good one. I, I can tell you, having worked for That's the state school for the deaf, still long enough. <laughs> I, I, I used to be a state employee with the state school for the deaf, and uh, and and the girlfriend I had at the time had two deaf children. So uh, it's not something you just go out and do and they comprehend it. You get it. It takes a fair amount of teaching to learn sign language. So I think if something is totally unfamiliar with that, how are they going to know what you're going to do or what you're doing? Well, oh, very good. I, I, I have a, uh, a thing, a story that I heard one time, and I don't exactly remember where I heard it, but a gentleman was, and you may know what I'm talking about, Well, you might have heard it too. A gentleman was hiking, and he had stopped and was just sitting on a big, rock boulder out in the woods and i actually don't remember if it was it was out on the northwest somewhere in washington or oregon and he was sitting there just resting and um he might have been drinking water i don't remember but anyway um dear regardless all of a sudden the bigfoot this big cinnamon colored bigfoot walked out of the woods and did not even notice him it was just walking across this grassy field and all of a sudden, the guy said, he said he didn't know why he did it, but he said, hi. And he raised his hand up and waved. And he said the Bigfoot actually stopped dead in his tracks, peered at him for, you know, a good minute or two. Like and the guy raised nuts. his hand up again. <laughs> and- <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, uh, and he raised his hand up again and waved at him, and he said the Bigfoot looked a little confused, but then he raised his hand up and waved at him in kind of the same motion that he'd made. So, you know, take it for what it's worth. Well, I, I, would, suggest, I, that's, I would suggest it's that old monkey saying, see, monkey, monkey see, monkey do. <laughs> and there, there, are universal yes. things, yeah. <laughs> there are universal things that humans do to each other, like waving, or motioning somebody to come towards them, they could pick up on that, not maybe necessarily knowing what it means, or if they see the result of that motion from one person to another, they might comprehend that. But uh, it's not that's not sign language, though. Well, no, but I'm just saying, and then how many times do we hear about them uh, motioning, beckoning children with their finger, you know, the same way we would, you know, motion to a child or even an, another individual to come to us. They do the same thing. Yeah, again, so it's, there I'm are, sure there they've are seen people, people do it. I think it's universal thing. Yeah, stuff yeah. that stuff I've even see people seen monkeys do, do it. And the monkey mothers do it to their babies, you know. So I do. I, I think there may be inherent things, but I've never seen one wave. <laughs> Hi, kid. <laughs> no, no, I've never seen one of them do that. You imagine the Bigfoot, you know, the guy hollering high and waving, the thing stopping and looking, thinking, is this guy an idiot or what? <laughs> well, I guess he'd have really been shocked if it had said hi back. <laughs> well, that's true. That's a good point. <laughs> I, you know, and that's an interesting story because, Will, would you do it? I sure as heck would. Oh, I heck would be no. Still <laughs> as a statue. You keep on moving, and when you're out of sight, I'm going the opposite direction, and I hope. <laughs> Your brothers and sisters aren't right behind you following. I don't want to run into them. Oh, gosh. <laughs> but I'll leave you guys the can of pork and beans on the rock if you leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> I'll even open it for you. <laughs> oh, there you go. Right? Oh, yes. Absolutely. Yeah, my head's not a, a, a can opener. <laughs> All right. Well, I think that's it for this episode of Q&A, and again, folks, send us your questions, questions at creekdevil.com. We love them, and uh, you, it is your show. This is how you get your questions answered. And remember, no dumb questions because your questions, there's hundreds of other people out there statistically that have the same question. So questions at creekdevil.com, creekdevil, questions at creekdevil.com, and we look forward to hearing from you. Thank you. Thanks, Be everyone. Be sure to like and subscribe to the show. Thanks, everyone. Well, thanks for stopping by, and stay tuned for next time. 
Thanks for listening to this episode of Creek Devil. If you or anyone you know has had an encounter with these creatures, please contact us at williamjevning at yahoo.com. That's William, J-E-V-N-I-N-G, at yahoo.com. All communication is confidential. Join us for another program next week. And until then, keep your eyes open out there. <laughs>